Hi everybody, this video is designed to help you as you work your way through the molecular modeling lab at home. Alright, so let's start with this first example problem. We are being asked to draw the Lewis structure for the molecular formula CH4O. So let's go ahead and work on that first, and then we'll go on to number two and three. All right, so first things first, we know we have one carbon atom, so I'll go ahead and draw that down. And that carbon atom is in group four, which means it has four valence electrons around it. In addition, we have four hydrogen atoms. So over here, I'm gonna draw four different hydrogen atoms. And each hydrogen atom is in group one, so it has one valence electron. And then last but not least, We've got oxygen. Oxygen is in group six, so it has six valence electrons. I'll go around, put one on each side, and then I'll pair up electrons like that. All right, so now we've got all of the individual Lewis structures for every atom. We need to link these together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restructure this a little bit. And in general, carbon likes to be on the interior, mean, meaning on the inside. So I'm gonna put that kind of in the center here. And we know that hydrogen likes to bond to carbon. So I'm going to stagger my hydrogen atoms around my carbon. However, I can't put my fourth hydrogen atom there, otherwise I wouldn't have a spot for the oxygen atom. So it seems highly likely that what we're going to do is put the oxygen atom kind of in between here and then the hydrogen atom that's left over, that fourth hydrogen atom, we can put down here. Whoops, it should be blue. So let's go ahead and change that. And then what we need to do is we need to pair all of our unpaired electrons and form bonds as needed. All right, so in this situation, I can see that we've got unpaired electrons here, 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 and here that can form bonds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and link these up. So I'll go ahead, link them up like this. And there we've got our Lewis structure. So we've created those new highlighted bonds. So now the question is, what are the bond angles here? Is that really 90 degrees or is it something else? Same thing with this bond angle. What is the bond angle right here? In order to do that, we have to start looking at Vesper theory. So let's continue on to step two. So for step two, we need to determine the electronic geometry for the central atoms. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more space to work on this. All right, so let's redraw the Lewis structure down here. This time I'm not gonna bother drawing everything in different colors. I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer my Lewis structure, which looks like this. And for the first central atom, we're gonna look at carbon. Later on, we'll look at oxygen, but for right now, let's look at this central carbon atom, meaning one of the atoms on the interior. When we're looking at the electronic geometry, we want to look at the number of electronic groups. If we look at that carbon atom, we'd say, all right, how many groups of electron pairs are around that central carbon? In this case, I would say that there are four electronic groups. So let's go back to that chart and see what happens if we have four electronic groups around that carbon. In this case, it's important to recognize that this is an electronic group, that's an electronic group, this is a group, and this is a group. So all four of the electronic groups are bonding pairs of electrons. So let's go up and look at that. And we'll use this electronic uh, geometry flowchart. In particular, we've got four regions of high electron density around a central atom. So what we're basically saying is we've got this carbon atom and then we've got bonds coming off of four different positions. So if we look at that, that means that this could best be described as tetrahedral. So let's go ahead and copy that down in our notes. So I'll go ahead down here and then I'll make a note and then I'll say that this is tetra hedral. All right, so I've got that taken care of. Now let's do the oxygen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and redraw the Lewis structure just for clarity's sake. 
And this time we're going to focus on the oxygen atom rather than the carbon atom. So this time I'm going to highlight the oxygen atom and I'm going to ask myself the same question. I'm going to say, what's the number of electronic groups? All right, and this time it's going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to count this lone pair as one group, this lone pair as a second group, this bonded pair as a third group, and then this other bonded pair as a fourth group. So again, we've got four electronic groups around oxygen, got two lone pair sets, and then two bond bonding pair sets. So again, because we've got four groups around that, we would still call this tetrahedral. All right, it's important to remember that when we're looking at the electronic geometry, we do count those lone pairs. So in this case, the example on the left with carbon doesn't have any lone pairs, so we have four electronic groups. And on the right, we do have those lone pairs, so we count them. And so in this case, they're both going to be classified as tetrahedral electronic geometries. All right, so now let's do the same thing, but with molecular geometry. The difference between molecular geometry and electronic geometry is with molecular geometry, we have to account for any sorts of lone pairs. So let's go ahead and kind of redo the, our Lewis structures down here, just really quick. And just like before, I'll do carbon on the left, and then I'll do oxygen over on the right. And I'll just really quickly, whoop, I'll really quickly copy down my Lewis structure from above just to make things nice and organized. All right, so over here, we're gonna actually separate things out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, this has four bonded atoms. And to be specific, I would say that that central carbon has zero lone pairs. All right, so now let's go to our Vesper sheet and see what happens if we have four bonded atoms and zero lone pairs. So I'll go up to the sheet for molecular geometry this time, not electronic geometry. And I'll say, all right, we know we've got four total electron pairs. That was our electronic geometry. And in this case, we've got zero lone pairs. So the correct molecule or the correct molecular shape for this would also be tetrahedral. In this case, you can tell we don't have a lone pair off of any of these positions, so it couldn't possibly be either of these. It must be tetrahedral. All right, so let's go ahead and make a note down here, and I'll just write tetrahedral. All right, let's do oxygen now. For this one, it's gonna be a little bit different. For oxygen, if we look at the number of bonded atoms, we've got a bond here to carbon. We've got a bond here to hydrogen. So we've got two bonded atoms. And if we look at the number of lone pairs, I'd say, well, we've got a lone pair there, and we've got a lone pair there. So we've got two lone pairs. So we've got a total of four electronic groups, but this time only two of them are bonded atoms. So let's go back to our worksheet and take a look at this. All right, so just like we said before, we've got a total of four electronic groups, but this time we're looking at something that has two lone pairs. So the best example is right here and right here, right? So the X's could be any bonded atom, but this one's clearly showing two lone pairs, which means that this must be considered bent or angular. Most people just refer to this as bent. And the bond angle here is gonna be less than 109 degrees. So let's go ahead and write that down. And let's make a note here that this is less than 109 degrees. Over here, we're gonna just write down it's approximately 109 degrees. 
All right. Some textbooks will show this as 109.5. In reality, these are all pretty close approximations to the value we should see. Some students will ask, well, why is this one less than 109? The reality is that the lone pairs actually repel one another slightly more than the pairs of electrons in bonds. So that's why that angle collapses down a little bit. In particular, the angle that we're looking at here is that angle. All right, so now the next thing is we need to use moleview.org to build a model of our compound and then sketch and paste it back into our workbook. So let's go ahead and try out using moleview. All right, so now we're in moleview.org. So let's go ahead and just hit close. You can see there's an example molecule shown. What I want to do is hit this garbage can over here in the top left hand corner and clear everything out. Then what I want to do is I want to use this list of atoms in the center here to start building my Lewis structure. So I know I had a carbon. I'm going to actually zoom in a bit. I've got an oxygen, got a hydrogen, 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 and we know that the carbon in this case is bonded to the hydrogen. So I'll go ahead and do that and attach all of the bonds here. If you had a double bond, you would select this double bond over here, triple bond down here. And then if you happen to be building things with rings, you can use those as well. All right, so this is my structure. Next, I'm gonna hit this little broom right here. That's the cleanup tool. And that will kind of polish things up and make it look a little bit nicer. Last but not least, I'm gonna hit this 2D to 3D. Over on the right-hand side, this will generate a molecule. You can use your mouse to zoom in on this and you can rotate it in space. So now we can see that this central carbon atom, meaning that gray ball, forms that tetrahedral shape. If we look over at the oxygen, we can tell quite clearly that the bond angle is not 90 degrees. Instead, it's closer to 109.5 degrees. So if we want, we can try to sketch this in our notebook. You can use dashes and wedges if you'd like, but it's kind of neat to play around with this. If you go to model, you can actually start looking at the van der Waal spheres, and you can see what this looks like in terms of the space filling showing the electron um, density regions within each of this molecule. But I really like just using the ball and stick model. So what I'll do right now is I'll take a snapshot and then move it over to my workbook. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use my OneNote tool to just take a quick picture of that. I'll just say copy to clipboard. I'll go back to OneNote and then I'll paste this into my notebook. And we've got our correct structure of our um, molecule that we're looking at. The molecule in this case is actually named methanol. It's a compound that's used in uh, a variety of industrial applications, primarily in making uh, plastics, but it can also be used in uh, race cars as an automotive fuel, which is kind of neat. All right, so that's where we'll stop. Try to work through the uh, example handout that your instructor gave you. And then if you get stuck, make sure that you reach out to either a friend or your instructor to get some clarification. All right, good luck.